Hey guys, you know those epic movie trailers, a lot of action and cool stuff, and then you see the full movie and you're like, eh, I guess it's alright, but I saw all the cool things in the trailer and the ending is kind of disappointing. This is that kind of a build. And I did manage to kill Shaper and I even got my first Starforge drop, but the fight itself was pretty disappointing. Same goes for Shaper Guardians. And Elder is even worse because monsters from the portals do not leave corpses. I always had issues with uh, not having enough corpses, and if I had enough corpses I had issues with having enough mana. While mana issues could be solved, but getting enough corpses is definitely a struggle. Now as for the mapping, it felt really amazing. Lots of explosions, good clear speed, a bit clunky but still pretty decent. I had no problems even in tier 15 maps and even in tier 15 incursions. Actually dealing with architects was kind of a joke. Throw desecrate corpses, use Valdity and architects usually just instantly dies. Of course depending on the map mods. Talking about map mods, you can kind of run most of the map mods. Of course you cannot run a reflect map. No region and no reach is also pretty annoying so probably wouldn't I recommend doing those. Also, since I'm using Coward's Legacy Belt, I basically had to build around this belt. That's why I picked Guardian. Because with this belt, you have 50% increased curse effect on you. So you need to counter that and then you need to counter vulnerability. So building around this belt is not very cheap. And in the end, I'm not even sure if it is worth using this belt. I think I could get similar, maybe even higher damage with different class without using this belt. And it would allow me to have more flexibility with my items. So I'm gonna talk about my items and skills while showing some clips and then gonna talk about passive skill tree briefly and as always all the timestamps and other stuff will be in the description. So my items, starting from the weapon actually I started using Martyr of Innocence stuff but it would require me to use two other uniques, one to self ignite and another one is Eye of Innocence and that would mean I would have even less life. So later I swapped to Dust Dawn Staff. Nothing too special about it, it just damage and also crit multiplier per block chance. And Guardian synergizes pretty well with block, so you do get up to 75% block chance for a couple seconds, which also translates into 75% additional crit multiplier. Next, helmet. I bought this helmet uh, pretty cheaply with uh, detonate dead enchantment, 45% chance to detonate an additional corpse, and it is not per cast, it is per corpse detonated. So if you are using spell echo and spell cascade, you detonate 6 corpses, and with this helmet enchantment, you detonate between 8 and 9 corpses on average, which also means you're gonna run out of corpses faster. Next, body armor, some random body armor from the temple that I linked randomly. Basically a lot of life and resistances. And the main link, Detonate Dead, I am using level 21 while Detonate Dead by the way. It is linked with Combustion, Spell Echo, Control Destruction, Spell Cascade and Fire Penetration. And yes, this is a crit build. And still, these gems gives me the most damage. Well, against big bosses I did try to swap Spell Cascade with Concentrated Effect Support Gem. But I really think it's not really worth it. Spell Cascade is just better maybe? I guess it depends if you can overlap more explosions. Also, it is easier to manage your mana with Spell Cascade. It is same mana cost as with Conk Effect, but you blow up more corpses. Next for the gloves, don't need anything too special, uh, gloves from the temple with added fire damage against burning enemies is pretty okay. As for the boots, I try to get a lot of life movement speed and spell dodge. Actually I slammed these boots and got a hybrid life roll. So now we are pretty expensive, but with less life we are not that expensive. Next belt, as I said, Cowards Legacy. Now to counter this belt I had 2 rings with a reduced curse effect on me. So with just 2 rings you counter the increased effect of curse on you from the belt and then from the guardian you get another 25% reduced curse effect and I thought that may be ok to counter the vulnerability but in the end I was feeling too squishy so I decided to get watcher Sai to be unaffected by vulnerability. But that also means that I have to run determination aura which on itself is actually pretty useless to me so now I'm only using using one ring with reduced course effect on me and then another 25% from the guardian and that allowed me to get a decent ring with some damage on life. As for the amulet I wanted some fire damage leech and some mana region was also pretty nice and these amulets uh, can be obtained from the temple so they are not that expensive in the incursion. Now couple more cool things about this belt. While you are cursed with vulnerability you are considered as being on low life. And that means you get 30% more spell damage from the pain attunement 
You can also roll life flask like this with instant recovery when on low life. And you can use Pantheon Paro like this one upgraded. Additional 60% increased life recovery from flask when on low life. So whenever you use life flask, you get instantly healed for over 3.4 thousand life. Also if you are wondering about the champion ascendancy, adrenaline buff from the champion would not be triggered by this. And of course there are other couple of uniques that uh, work on no life. But like I said, it's pretty annoying to work around this build because the drawback is pretty high. Also you cannot use Curse Immunity Flasks because that would just remove your bonus damage. Anyway, more about my skills. In my helmet I have Herald of Ash linked with Enlightened level 3, Clarity level 1 and Determination. Clarity level 1 because I got Watcher's Eye, which says 70% of damage taken gain as mana over 4 seconds when hit while affected by Clarity. So once I get hit, I no longer have any mana issues, at least for a couple seconds. For Corpse Generation, I do have in my gloves a nerf linked with GMP, Faster Casting and Spell Totem. And in my 5 link staff, I have Desecrate linked with Faster Casting, Arcane Surge level 7, Spell Cascade and Flame Dash. So both Flame Dash and Desecrate triggers Arcane Surge which gives me more damage basically. And I did experiment a lot with my corpse generating skills. I was trying to use Essence Gloss with more cast speed and using a nerf, uh, self casting a nerf, then using Totems to cast a nerf, then using Desecrate to cast it faster. And every of those setups had an issue. And I, this is what I end up with. But if you're gonna make this build, you should experiment and see what you like more. If you're not using Spell Cascade for Detonate Dead, it's probably worth using Self Cast Unearth over Desecrate, but it has that annoying delay when you shoot those projectiles and then you have to wait for those projectiles to land. So maybe even use faster projectile support. By the way, Desecrate can create up to 15 corpses, while Unearth can only have up to 10 corpses. But Unearth doesn't have any annoying cooldown. And lastly, in my boots I have Cast When Damage Taken, linked with Immortal Call, Warlord's Mark, and also have Rowling Cry. Rowling Cry gives you damage and increases mana region. And because this is Guardian, uh, maybe let's take a look at the passive skill tree now. So Guardian has Harmony of Purpose, which gives you 10% chance to generate power, frenzy and endurance charge on hit. By the way, Detonate Dead is actually a 2 hit spell. One hit is spell damage and another hit is explosion which scales from the corpse life. Well, both are explosions which is kind of confusing but still. Uh, this simply makes it very easy to generate charges. Then I took Time of Need, uh, which gives you reduced effect of course on you and basically a passive heal every couple seconds. Then Bastion of Hope and Prayer of Glory. And Prayer of Glory makes your Warcry give 50% increased cast, attack and movement speed. And while it says using Warcry is instant, it still interrupts any action that you are doing. Now from the passive skill tree, since I'm using a staff, I did take staff crit nodes and as you can see I travel all the way to the shadow area to get more crit nodes, pain attunement of course and do not neglect getting mana. Think of mana and mana region as damage. If you have no mana you have no damage. And currently my level 21 Detonate Dead costs 113 mana. A 5 link setup would be a lot cheaper on mana cost and the damage would still be pretty decent. Also my other jewels are not the best, you could definitely get something better. And by the way this is level 87. I was planning on taking Throat Seeker for more Chris Strike Multiplier, but in the end I decided to go for more mana and mana region. Oh and uh, as for the flask, I am using of course Diamond Flask, Wise Oak, you need to have uh, fire resistance the highest. As it is promise isn't the best one, it just gives some leech but you don't really need leech if you got uh, amulet with fire damage leech. If you don't have fire damage uh, leech amulet, then as it is promise is definitely uh, basically a requirement. Then one life flask, but I was also experimenting having a mana flask instead of quicksilver against uh, bigger bosses but managing mana was still kind of annoying and you kind of do need quicksilver flask because you can't use good movement uh, skills while using a staff and lastly as for the damage if you're checking damage in path of building it is a bit misleading especially if you're using spell cascade and like i said detonate dead is a two hit spell so you also need to account for corpse life and explosion from corpse life but the damage is enough to kill shaper but if 
if you're not going to kill Shaper and just use it for mapping, you will have enough damage even on a 5 link setup, and without even level 21 dead or dead. And that's gonna be all. As for my next build is gonna be a Deadeye, which is unusual to me, and I'm gonna be making Dual Mjolnir, Spectral Throw. If you remember my old Hammerdin build, is basically a remake of that, except uh, probably it should be better. Hopefully it will be better. Will be better. Yeah, it would be hard to make it worse. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you soon.